Okay, so this lecture will return to point-wise convergent. And before that, let's just recall the uh, riemann lebesgue lemma is that given any integral of a function on a circle, then its coefficient goes to zero as n tends to infinity on both directions. And furthermore, we have, well, which means that this goes to zero, right, by definition. And, and we have, I think it's subtract, right, because it's e to the negative i n, right? So, okay, there's something wrong, but even though it's wrong, it doesn't matter, right? Because our conclusion states that the real and imaginary part both tends to zero as n tends to infinity. Okay, so keep this observation in mind, provided that you're given any integrable function f, okay? So let's just start. And before we start, we need our supporting proposition which states that, well, if you're bounded on an interval and pick a point in the interior, if for all small delta, the function is integrable on the interval. So basically, um, we get A, B, C, So this is what we got, right? This is delta, delta, okay? So if it is integrable on this region, then you're integral on the entire region, okay? So that's basically what it says. So it is not hard to prove because, well, because it's true for all small delta, so we can scale the delta. Oh, don't be afraid that this delta looks really weird. We'll, we'll see that this change is only to make our estimate to look better, okay? Just to look better. So, if it's bound, we keep it bound. So, for any epsilon, because it's integral on each, this interval, so you can pick a partition such that it's lower sum, upper sum, deferred by epsilon over 3 for i equal to 1, 2, right? And then we form a new partition, by adjoining these two points. So we, we add these points to form a partition partition of A B. Right? So from this partition then we know that the upper sum minus the lower sum. Well for here the upper sum minus lower sum is less than delta over three delta, uh, epsilon over three on these two sides. But here Notice that, notice that the, the bound, right, the bound, we have the bound here. Well, the upper sum minus lower sum, we come by triangle inequality is less than the, this, right, by triangle inequality. And the length is 2 delta. So this whole thing is then 4 delta m, right, less than epsilon 3. So you see that it's only to make our estimate to look better okay so we have this supporting proposition we can officially start our proof i mean our our theorem okay so the theorem says that well because we have done things we last time we have only proved that the sn and f last time we only proved that f minus sn f right this goes to zero, right? But this is not quite helpful. Like we only have this result and that's it. Well, today, like now, we're gonna return back to um, pointwise convergence. So if you're integral of a function and you're differentiable at this point, then the series converges to f, f n tends to infinity. Okay, so if you're differentiable, then then we have, then we have this as n tends to infinity. Okay, so we can approximate f. And so the proof, we start to find f t to be this quotient of this. Okay. So f t for t is non-zero. We define this quotient. For t equals zero, we just define it to be like the derivative. Okay. But why is it negative? Because notice that this 
as t tends to zero, right? We can multiply negative and negative, so this is our like h tends to zero, right? Which gives negative f prime theta naught because f is differentiable at this point, which means that f is continuous at zero. If you're continuous at zero, that means that you're bounded near zero. Okay, you're bounded near zero, and other than that, you're just continuous. Okay. So, for a small delta, and for t greater than delta, so among these regions, f is f is integrable on these regions, right? And we have this is less than one over delta, so it is bounded, which means that f is bounded, and also f is integrable. Why? Because, well, okay, this is bounded, so f won't explode. F won't explode, right? Um, this region, and observe that okay, this function is integrable. One over t is integrable, and theta minus t is continuous. So f of theta minus t is also continuous. I don't know. Okay, let me let me restate that. So theta not minus t is just a transformation of f. So if you're integrable, you this is still integrable, and you subtract by a constant, it's still integrable. So this is integral times one over t also integrable, which means that this entire thing is integrable because the product of integrable function is integrable. Okay. And by the proposition we just proved, right? For small for any small delta, right? For any small delta, f is bounded, right? And this integrable on outside, right? For for any delta, right? Because you're continuous at zero. So as you approach us to zero, you must be bounded, right? And yeah, so you're integrable on the entire interval. Okay, so this is like a key thing we have now. So this is like a like one key result. Okay, so now let's keep going. Recall that the partial sum of the Fourier series is really just f convolution of f with the n Dirichlet kernel. So we just calculate this difference. Okay. So we subtract f naught, but notice that this integral is equal to one, right? For Dirichlet kernel, so we can we can put this inside, okay? So we're gonna put this inside, and because f is continuous, right? So it's okay to rewrite this as this thing, okay? I mean, it, it doesn't matter because. Well, even at t is equal to zero, right? F t times t, f zero is like the finite thing times zero, which is zero, and yeah, if you if the zero it just still gives you zero, so we can just make this substitution directly, okay? So we don't even need f is continuous at zero, okay? We already used it for the boundedness, and recall that the closed form of Dirichlet kernel is equal to this, and this is continuous at zero, right? Because the limit of t of sine t over two is equal to two times t over two sine t over two, let t go to zero, which gives you two, right? Because this limit is equal to one, right? Yeah? Okay. If we define this to be, I don't know, two. Yeah? Yeah, if you just define, if you just define this to, to be the limit, right? If you just define as zero, it takes the, the limit value of t goes to zero. If you just make this definition, then we can have that this function is continuous at zero, so it's continuous everywhere, which means that it is integrable. Okay, so this function is integrable. If 
for this one, we expand it by trig formula, which means that if we return to this case, we just do the expansion, okay? This is just sub in and we multiply out directly using this, okay? So notice that F2 is integrable. This is integrable. Cosine t over 2 is integrable. Okay, so their product, which is the entire thing, is integrable. And also, this is integrable. Okay, because Ft is integrable, t, t is integrable, so their product is integrable. Okay? Now, with that being said, <coughs> we use the uh, riemann lebesgue lemma. Right? riemann lebesgue lemma states that, well, if you are integrable, then 0 2 pi of this dt, this goes to 0. Right? Uh, so does this go to 0. And we use the linearity, which means that this goes to 0. Right? But this thing is equal to this. So this has been goes infinity. Okay, so that's the proof. And we have a little exercise to conclude this section. So if you're periodic of class CK, then we want to show this is true. Okay, so the integration my parts gives this formula. Well, the CK, which means that K derivative is continuous and so it's integrable. Well, we use, we then we know that this is converging, right? If this is converging, then we know that each term goes to zero, which means that this goes to zero as n goes to infinity, right? This goes to zero, so n goes to infinity, right? Okay, so this uh, just concludes uh, this little lecture, okay? I'll see you guys next time.